Hello Capricorn, welcome to your weekly reading for September 16th to the 22nd. This is for Capricorn, Capricorn Rising and Capricorn Moon. And before we jump into it, just a personal message. I really want to thank you all for all your really kind comments and messages that I received while I was a little out of it. <laughs> uh, clearly I'm out of the hospital, but I will talk about it in the uh, live stream up, uh, over the weekend. Okay. About what happened. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better. Um, and I also want to apologize for the lighting. I'm trying to get your readings out before uh, for the week uh, because I am feeling better. And the, I just I have to do it at a certain time of day where there's all this sunlight. But I think it's a great sign. OK, so let's jump into it, Capricorn. Uh, you know, Capricorn, I've, I've, I've been thinking about you a lot. You're going through so much change. OK, Pluto moving back into your sign for the last time for, you know, up until November. That's going to be really strong. But then I was thinking about, you know, you've got so much work stuff happening. We're about to move into Libra season. Uh, there's so much there's so much going on. And then I was thinking about that full moon in Aries that we're going to have in October. That's going to, you know, there's activity at home. And, you know, you, you get a new moon. I hope you know that. You get a new moon literally kicking off 2025. It's, I think it's December 30th in your sign during your birthday season. Anyway, y'all are going through changes and I'm very excited for you because you're moving in this new direction in your life and you're going to start feeling it this week, Capricorn, with a uh, uh, really significant change with the full moon lunar eclipse that we have in Pisces. So this week really is a week of transition. In fact, you may have started feeling it <laughs> the beginning of this month with that new moon in Virgo as well as Pl you know Pluto moving back into your uh, sign for two months and and this full moon in uh, full, full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces, Saturn is in Pisces. Saturn is going to be really strong. Saturn is your ruling planet. So I'm just going to say right now, you are going through change. You may be already feeling that change. You could feel a little bit of that pressure with you know the Saturn square, Saturn oppositions that we've had lately. So I want you to hang in there because it it it's it you know could have been really strong for y'all. Um, and you know, this eclipse in Pisces is in your third house. So that's a lot of communication. That's possibly important conversations that you need to have. Uh, third house is your local environment. It's also short distance travel, a lot of family energy too, with sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors, but it's also just learning new things. So you're on this brink of like, uh, it's possibly like there's stuff that you want to do. There's new things that you want to explore this eclipse it's still a full moon remember that okay so uh a really really strong full moon all right it is an eclipse so one thing i want you to know is that this eclipse because it's a lunar eclipse the key theme that i want you to take away is that it's releasing things okay it's release all right still a culmination that's coming to an end there's something happening here there may be a turning point for you uh it really is breaking down any walls that you may have built up remember even pluto having moved move back into your sign, you know, those structures, those systems I was talking about. But, you know, Pisces doesn't have any walls. And so there is going to be for a lot of y'all just really, really breaking down walls that you may have up and just let me let me move forward. Let me get through this. All right. So it's really going to be this great time of awakening for you. So I really love this. And it is. Yes, it, it could be a very emotional eclipse. So when I say release, I've been even saying like to other signs, like if you have to have like a really good cry, have it like I can attest to, you know, sometimes like having those moments bring these great breakthroughs. So, you know, just have that release. Uh, it really is going to be a time where uh, it, it, it's, it's very can be an emotional eclipse. Don't forget Mars is in Cancer, all right? So with that added to it, emotions can be heightened around this time anyway. But use all of this to empower yourself as you move forward, okay? Because you're about to go through some changes. Remember, eclipses come in pairs, and that's why I actually wrote down here. Just as a reminder, in the next two weeks, we will have a lunar eclipse in Libra. And so when I say you're going through transition and uh, changes, it really is for the next 
two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. It's going to be, you're going through changes. You're going through changes. And I mentioned career. Libra does rule your 10th house of career. And so you see we're moving into Libra season. You're going to have a lot of focus there. We already have Venus in Libra right now. Uh, you, there may be some changes. There may be some shifts, okay? Uh, and remember, new moon, solar eclipse. It's just new beginnings. So what I want you to think about now is releasing what no longer serves you well in order to make room for things that will bring you this greater balance in your life. And, and you're going to feel so much more comfortable with that, all right? Because, you know, end of Pisces and then with the eclipse, something coming to an end, something new beginning for you. Now, this full moon, partial lunar eclipse, uh, I think I mentioned in your monthly forecast to really pay attention to what happens in September because it's going to give you an idea of what your life may be like in 2025 and 2026, to be honest, okay? Because we're moving into the Pisces Virgo axis, the lunar nodes are, are moving into that axis. And so that's going to be kind of a big deal. You're going to be traveling a lot. I, I want you to know there's be a lot of emphasis on travel uh, but communication and spirituality all of that to, you know like I, I think I, I, we've talked about this uh so the eclipse axis the pisces virgo eclipse axis it actually ends august 2026 so it's going to be a two-year thing here it's going to be a two-year thing here and then in august 2026 we move into the aquarius leo axis all right so very interesting that's when there's going to be so much focus on money for y'all big big amazing mo money moments uh but we'll talk about that in 2026 <laughs> so for this eclipse we have uh saturn neptune and you know obviously the moon in pisces and then we have the sun and mercury still in virgo at this point and if you want to throw in jupiter jupiter's still in gemini so those are all mutable signs all right so we have six planets of mutable signs and that is just that's change. So there's going to be some changes, <laughs> especially with this eclipse. And uh, I want you to move into it, like feeling very empowered. All right. That's just, you know, that's what life is. We have, you know, change is the only constant in this world. But I like all this mutable energy because it can make everything easier more effortless for you as you adjust to these changes. Now, one thing about this eclipse I just want to really bring up is that Neptune will be conjuncting the eclipse. And as you know, obviously, you, you know, your ruling planet Saturn is up there too. All right. So uh, both planets in, in Pisces, very watery, right? Pisces being a water sign. Uh, like I said, emotions can be, you know, heightened around this time. Intuition as well. All right. Especially with Neptune here. Uh, just know that Pisces is a collective unconscious and Pisces is very dreamy. And, I'm, and, and, and I want you to take that as two ways. One, yes, pay attention to your dreams, literal dreams. They could be sending you messages around the eclipse. Remember, the, the moon's going to be strong. <laughs> and so you may be getting like, uh, you know, messages from your guides, what, what, you know, just through your dreams. Okay. And that's going to, you know, really heighten your intuition as well, this eclipse. Secondly, when I say dreams, think of it as in, I have a dream, okay? That's that's what we're, we're talking about here. I have a dream, and I'm going to achieve it, all right? So uh, I really, really want you to go deep around this eclipse. And with Neptune conjuncting the eclipse, just ask yourself, am I being honest with myself with the pursuits that that I have planned, okay? Uh, I'm not saying any of y'all are like on the wrong path or anything, but this eclipse is really asking you to release something okay remember that is the key word for this eclipse but use your intuition it really will be heightened around this time and uh this eclipse is it, it's very there's a lot of creative energy here as well imagination uh healing both mental uh emotional health as well spirituality i mean we're talking about pisces right so empathy compassion uh especially with neptune here but this just think the collective unconscious so what you do around this time is raising your frequency, okay? And I want you to think about Pisces, even just the constellation of Pisces. If you just break that down, it's the fish swimming upstream and then the fish swimming downstream, okay? So you've got that happening. And so you can think of it as conscious, unconscious, subconscious, but uh, the big takeaway, I really just want you to think about 
a school of fish. Okay, you you're you're part of the school of fish. All right. And so this eclipse is just asking you to get in line with a school of fish because you're moving toward this great awakening, this personal awakening for you and for the collective unconscious. So this is what's going to help you evolve. All right. It's it's what's going to help you evolve, but it's that release knowing what you need to release that uh, that just definitely going to help you move forward. Uh, and I, I really just want to emphasize this because Neptune is going to be highly charged, but Mercury is also going to be very highly charged, especially being in its domicile and exaltation of Virgo. Um, and remember I said the Pisces Virgo axis, it's just r pay attention to what happens in September. And if you've, you remember Virgo rules your ninth house of spirituality, your belief system, what you believe, okay, at, at your yeah, at higher mind. And so there is this element of of and with what's happening here, especially because Mercury is going to be opposite Saturn, there is a little bit of that disconnect because Mercury is trying to get all the facts, whereas Neptune is clouding everything. So as long as you trust your intuition, you're going to be fine. There is a sense of like a reality check around this time, but just be honest with yourself. Remember, I, I've continued to say Neptune retrograde in Pisces at the degree it's at. You know, it can bring up those lower energy frequencies like illusion, escapism big big one here okay self-sabotage um so have that release recognize what you what you might have to release and it can be something in your physical world it can be within you uh whether it's you know like habits that you have that you're just like i recognize this i want to you know i'm not moving forward with that I'm gonna leave that in the past uh it could be you know grudges it could be you know denial about something anything that you're holding back this eclipse is asking you to release it okay opening up your heart and having that self-love all right now um I, I talked about mercury opposite saturn just the other thing about that is i would pot just for, for you particularly because remember saturn is your ruling planet I would avoid signing any sort of contracts around this time, especially because Saturn and Pisces is in your third house and that, you know, that's agreements, negotiations, contracts, and, you know, it's, it's opposing Mercury, which is the ruler of the third house. And so that could be really strong around for, for you Capricorn. And so just avoid, uh, any official big thing that you might, uh, that might come up could even be legal matters with the fact that, you know, you do have Mercury in Virgo in your ninth house. So just know it may not be the best time like around this eclipse. All right. That's, that's one thing. And then, uh, as we move throughout the week, you see on Thursday, the sun trying Uranus. So you're going to absolutely love this. And this is going to have a strong impact on you, Capricorn. This is huge breakthrough energy. Remember Uranus is all about breakthroughs and free and and even surprises so you could receive extremely you know surprising unexpected news um uranus is in taurus in your fifth house so that's love and relationships that's family that's children that's joy that's pleasure creativity okay creative breakthroughs self-expression procreation recreation all of those themes here so really really nice in fact it's a grand trine all right that's what we call it because we have the sun in virgo uh uranus in taurus and pluto in your sign all right so remember you may really feel this impact and you see just a few days later, the sun will try and Pluto in your sign. So uh, really great earth trying that's happening here uh on on saturday there could be someone that's really powerful uh that opens up doors for you sorry about that um but there's also a sense of your personal transformation that may feel really good this week these trines are enormously auspicious all right and then you see on sunday i'm sure all that sunlight i don't know if you can see but um we, well yeah we move into libra season so there's going to be this strong emphasis on work for you we're going to talk about sunday more next Next week because these aspects are going to influence next week a lot more um this have more emphasis then uh and then venus moving into scorpio and then you see that we have that eclipse two weeks later but i really just wanted to just put that there to show you all this libra energy that we're moving into and again that is your 10th house of career so there may be some really big career moments. And when I say career, if you're not here for here, if you're not here for career, whatever you're exerting your energy into that you want to be known for, the 10th house is also fame. It's honors. It's uh, a public recognition. It's 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 uh, achievements. All right. So Capricorn, let's get started. Let's see what's going on for you for the week of September 16th to the 22nd for Capricorn, Capricorn rising and Capricorn moon. Okay, Capricorn, um, 
I uh, I do a traditional cult across spread. It offers the best overview. If we need a full clarifiers, you know that we will. Secondly, um, uh, what was I going to say? Y'all are amazing. Thanks so much, y'all. Yeah, y'all have just been. Uh, I I really do appreciate your support and what a week it has been. So um, let's let's get started. I know you're not going to be able to see because again, like this sunlight. So I'm going to bring the cards up to the uh, oh to the screen. Oh, okay, this is going to be a big week for you. Uh, so yeah, I listen. I like when I started off saying that you're going through some enormous change. It's all showing here. I honestly cannot believe. Can you you? can't see any of this right um okay so let's let's get, look at that can you see that this is pretty mind-blowingly amazing um let's get started you have the four of wands so great <laughs> amazing a lot of family energy that i was talking about for y'all that uh, you know there may be emphasis there uh you may be feeling it, it, this is a card of celebration it's so much joy in the four of wands uh and when i say family there could have been something like really like maybe even like a family reunion there could have been something like being in touch with family members or working with them or you know just having these really great moments with them now it doesn't necessarily you know disclude anything else it could be like with friends and your squad or even colleagues but they're this this is all about milestones the four of wands so there could have been some of y'all that maybe you know uh have been proposed to or you know even got a promotion or got a new job started your own business had a baby anything really big significant in your life and remember i you know dropped these uh forecasts a little bit early so you know it still could be you know coming but I, I absolutely love this for you. Wands are all about your passions and your ambitions, but also like, again, just they're so invigorating. They have that, uh, you know, creative energy with the wands and again, work related, big matters here, big matters here. Um, this card is actually attributed to sun in Aries. Remember the North node is in Aries in your fourth house. All right. So there is, you know, that's your domestic sector, significant other family, children, real estate, all of those matters, but you have that overlap with, you know, Uranus and Taurus in your fifth house for some of those themes. Now, uh, hello in the heart of your spread, you got the world. Um, Capricorn, this is absolutely amazing. I'm very excited for you. And I want you to be proud of your yourself for everything that you've done to this point okay we all make decisions karmic decisions that we know are pushing ourselves forward in a direction but we know we're being our, our authentic selves uh the world we've come to the end of the major arcana and so what makes this really significant is that sure there is this sense of starting anew okay this new journey that you're about to go on this new journey this new path that is is absolutely like a you're going to be great. Um, there is also uh, one thing that I was going to mention is that this card is attributed to Saturn. And as I've been saying, Saturn is your ruling planet. So Saturn can Saturn's been a little naughty the past few weeks. So that's why I say really, really feel proud of yourself for where you are now and the decisions that you've made and where you're going moving forward. You can see uh, the dancing figure dancing for a reason. Okay, dancing for a reason. And uh, again, end of the end of the fool's journey, end of the hero's journey. We're moving into this new journey. You're moving into this new journey. Remember the wreath here. Uh, you see the Ouroboros secretly hidden in the river. Uh, the wreath uh, garland is shaped as a zero referencing the fool all right so going back to the fool's journey so absolutely you're about to go through some major change now you have the empress in your challenge area and so there is when i say not seeing eye to eye yes there could be someone in your life that is not seeing eye to eye um so almost like uh uh like mm, regina george energy coming up there could be someone that uh you just it, it's it's a matter of like working with those energies and making sure that like hey i'm making karmically sound decisions i'm being my authentic self i'm being the better person in this situation so just be true to your you be uh your authentic self there could be someone there now the other thing is that there could be a sense of like overindulging this week um we are moving into uh you know some other assets well i'll talk about them next week but um i i'm really getting more of uh the effect of like there is someone in your life that you know it almost maybe you having to speak to that person as well like listen like i what's going on sheila you know what i mean like there's 
And you would be, when you're in touch with your intuition, you would be aware of that, okay? Because you're aware of your surroundings and it can be a colleague, it can be a family member. Again, it can be a friend, whatever resonates with you. Now, uh, so just handle that with like grace and you're going to be fine. You've got the six of pentacles in your crown. Really great. Okay. Because there is a sense of like this week, you may be feeling a lot of that support, thinking about that support, but also being selfless and helping others. That's what the six of pentacles is. You can see the very philanthropic man here, you know, helping these, uh, people that are, that need that, that support. Okay. And so I really love that for you because it seems like you're thinking about that. You're thinking about, how can I improve someone else's life? But it's that action of even thinking about it that already raises your frequency. So really love this energy. And again, it just seems like there's this harmonization that's happening. It just feels like the biggest energy that that's coming up is like, it feels like you're aware of changes that are happening. And it's almost like you're excited for this new journey that you're, Im you're about to embark on. Uh, and it just, you got the wheel of fortune and the root of your spread. I mean, when I say this is a big reading, this is a big this is it. This is it. This is huge. Uh, Wheel of Fortune, there's a sense of fate, this fated journey, new path opening up for you. And again, I, I, like I said, some of y'all have already started feeling it. Even as we kicked off September, you're definitely going to feel it within the next few weeks, especially this week as we have the first eclipse of the season. But this brings this sense of like, okay, new paths are opening up for me. Okay. For some of y'all, you may not know what the path are going to be like. You may not know, right? You even see the, uh, the Sphinx sitting on top of the wheel there. So there's that sense of mystery. But again, that excitement is really strong in terms of, okay, this is going to be a fun ride. This is going to be a fun ride. In fact, actually, when you think about it, now that I think about it, you did get the full, right? In the, in, in the heart of your spread uh, last week, all right? So again, some of y'all may have already begun this new journey. And now you have the King of Cups in your future. And the King of Cups is someone who is so emotionally stable, all right? Someone who is really, uh, you know, his he's got so much love to give. But when I say emotionally stable, and you can see his throne on top of the water here. And so... If you take a close look, you can see that the water is a little bit choppy and turbulent, but it's, he's the king of cups. It's not going to knock him off. That's how stable he is, all right? Cups, emotions, feelings, intuition, wonderment. He is very intuitive, too. And so you're moving into this place where, yeah, I've, I've got this. I've got this. And I can be the rock for everyone else, okay? So I love this energy, all right? I love this. And I love your spread, this is really wonderful. All right, let's get let's get let's see what's going on with their stuff. Capricorn, uh, Capricorn, y'all are amazing. Thanks so much for being here. Um, if you like this reading, by the way, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. They all help with the algorithm, and you know I love y'all. All right, so and again, I'm sorry about the lighting here. Okay, let's but well, let's get to it. Okay, yep, yep, yep. There's there's oh whoa. Okay, so there's 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 stuff happening. There is some stuff happening. Um, there are things you want. There are things you want, Capricorn. Mm. You're gonna get it. All right, so just keep that in mind. Um, that intuitive energy is going to be really strong for you because you did get the seven of cups. Now, remember what I said with the wheel of fortune, the rudier spread, something that was coming up for me is like, sure, new journey, new journey. I'm, I'm definitely like releasing things for this eclipse. And maybe I don't know where things are going. Okay. Maybe I don't know where, uh, you know, but as long as you trust your intuition, you have that trust. Okay. You have that trust, faith in yourself and in the universe and you don't have any trust you don't have to worry about it. you have the seven of cups here so this is very interesting because i'm looking at what's going on here like your entire spread you can't see it but you got three sevens triple seven all right so we're going to talk about this um and seven really is you know when i'm when i see what's coming what's happening here it's more about like that desire but seven of cups is just saying like yes know what you want <laughs> know what you want this is a card where uh it's almost like ask like question like not even questioning it yeah maybe even a little bit your motivation like is this what i'm seeking for the right reasons 
is this what I'm moving toward because this is going going to serve me well or is it going to serve someone else well? Or, you know, be true to you. Be true to you. Manifest what you know is going to not only raise your frequency, but put you on the path that you know that you deserve, right? So this is just, you know, there's a little bit of smoke and mirrors here, all right? A little bit of smoke and mirrors. It's just a matter of connecting, intuitively knowing what you want. As you move forward, uh, it, it really is going to make all that uh, uh, a really big difference. Um, and all the cups are very different. So really, really focusing on on what it is that it again cutting through that fog that neptune is going to bring uh you also got the seven of swords in your external factors area so cut through that fog to see if there's anyone you know in your life that may be a little mean girlsy okay or <laughs> someone that is just you know maybe like and again it can it can be like even like a boss someone who is just like you're just not seeing eye to eye with but they may be doing something a little like sneaky uh, this card is all about uh you know dishonesty deceit but remember what i said it could even be like uh you right like not being honest with yourself i'm not getting that energy for this reading uh but this is more about being aware of Am I serving myself or am I serving someone else that, you know, doesn't have the intentions that I intuitively know is 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 definitely not going the right direction? But Seven of Swords is someone that could be doing someone something to you. Again, like with that Mean Girls energy. Now you have the Seven of Swords here. Uh, it really could be something that uh, you would you'll know. You'll know intuitively uh, if it has any sort of impact on your self-worth, self-value, uh, confidence levels. It could even have to do with money. Uh, it could even be someone doing like mind games. Uh, I'm going to clarify this seven of swords. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, clarified. You got the six of swords. <laughs> so you you have that you 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 work with that energy. Someone in your life again work family friend whatever it is that you are you know like okay we gotta we need to talk we need to talk um uh, i'm trying to have this release we need to talk once you have that conversation you're gonna be fine remember i said you may have like important conversations or whatnot but this week but there you go you got the six of swords which is that transition of moving forward okay moving forward and this person could possibly it could be so significant that it does have like a really impact on you, but you get to a point where you're like, okay, well that, you know, it happened. We, I did my best talking to this person. I did my best. I did the best that I could moving forward now. Okay. You see even like here, the turbulent water as well. Okay. But they're moving past that. The people on the boat, they're moving past that. You see, there's no undulation, uh, this, this point forward. Okay. So moving into like, let's say chaos to calm chaos to come. All right. So swords are of the mind. All right. So it is more about your headspace and finally just like, okay, I, this has been taking up too much headspace. I'm not going to allow that for myself anymore. I'm going to deal with this. Now you have the seven of wands. Uh, it comes in your area of like your hopes and fears. Now here's the thing, like there may be a little bit of y'all that are really, really working on your confidence in terms of you see him standing at the top of the hill, right? Everyone else is under. You see all the wands coming after him. He's got he's got the advantage. He's got the better view. He's got the advantage. So uh, this is all about valor. This is all about standing up for yourself. Okay. So use that energy. Use that energy this week of empowerment. That's what I said from the very beginning. Use this eclipse to empower yourself. Release the things that you no longer need, no longer serve you well. Um, and uh, one other thing that was coming up uh, with the seven of ones when I saw all these like the triple sevens is that there is likely uh, some Capricorns that may feel that you have to um, you have to like it's almost like there's this continuous back and forth or this continuous fight. OK, so again, remember what I said with his eclipse release those things really what whatever you need to do to make you know have peace of mind release those things and then you have the eight of pentacles in your final outcome and so that's really nice 
Eight of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles, very interestingly, if you are a cross watcher, you know that the Eight of Pentacles has come up a lot. <laughs> um, like if you watch for your, you know, rising or moon or for your mom or your best friend, whoever it is, your significant other, um, eight of pentacles has been coming up a lot. Uh, it is sun in Virgo is what this card is attributed to. And this week, remember the sun is in Virgo, right? That is, that rules your ninth house. So working on your spiritual growth, right? So working on, you know, even the way that you're seeing things, uh, even higher education, higher mind, those are all part of the ninth house, but even with the eight of pentacles here just in general this is just someone who is laser focused and working and working and working and working to achieve his goals to reach the finish line to 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 reach his legacy so i really like this for you because there is a sense of like not being distracted i'm truly working on myself and and that's going to make the big difference here um and and uh, reaping the rewards of it all there is a sense of like you know, uh, karate kid energy that comes with it. Eight of Pentacles, like practice, you know, like wax on, wax off, practice makes perfect and whatnot. So, um, do you want me to clarify that? What time, how much time do we have? I'll clarify it. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Look at what you're going to reap from working hard. Working harder yourself on your personal growth. Um, again, not being distracted. There is a sense of like you go straight to the nine of pentacles, eight of pentacles. Like I said, reaping your words, all that discipline paid off, all that hard work paid off. And and Capricorn, if you remember your last week's reading, you did get the nine of pentacles. Actually, you did get the nine of pentacles in your future. So there you go. You're on the right path. You just continue to do that work and, and just don't, you know, like just continue to go down your path. Um, and there's that all that abundance with the nine of pentacles and that sense of like, you know, I made this, I achieved this and, and I did this by myself. Okay. Uh, there is a sense of independence with the nine of pentacles. You can see the symbol of Venus all over a gown as well. I really love this energy. It really could be something that you've been working hard toward that has to do with like work career or even just like your passions right because this is very work related money related for sure with the pentacles here uh and then you've got the nine of pentacles uh which is all about this abundance venus like i said is in libra right now in your 10th house and you're moving toward that a lot of uh, career energy there but either way this is just feel good energy but also like that spiritual growth i like that enlightenment that i really love here so i i can't even i have to say this is your best weekly reading you've had in a in a long time i mean this eclipse is going to be great for you all right just be r ready to release and, I, and i'm so sorry i wish that you could um see the uh let me just i wonder if i can just do this can you do that can you see there you go okay that's 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 your spread this week um very nice but just definitely uh you know have those conversations with anyone that you need to that is you know maybe maybe you need to see a little bit more eye to eye with with that seven of swords in your external factors area some of that could be due it is attributed to this card is attributed to like uh lying cheating stealing all those low energy frequencies right but remember what i said Neptune is conjuncting this eclipse, so bring in those low energy frequencies anyways. <laughs> uh, or po the possibility is really strong um, with Neptune uh, conjuncting this eclipse. So there is that element there. So you're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. Look at this. I, I You're good. You're good. Capricorn, thanks so much for tuning in. If you uh, like this reading, would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. And next week, we'll talk more about Libra season. Mm, a lot of other things happening. Venus moving into Scorpio in your 11th house. Venus in Scorpio is spicy. <laughs> and that's with friendships, groups you belong to, and your hopes, your wishes, your dreams. Very interesting time for you. Remember, I said there's some big things happening for Capricorns, but I'm very excited for you. Thanks so much, Capricorn. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.